Hey everyone, this is Coloring Chemist. My name is Connie and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So this is kind of an updated coloring space video. Things haven't changed too much since the fall. Um, the weather outside looks a little different. I'll try not to move too quickly. I'm actually filming this on my iPhone instead of my camera. So it might sound a little different, might look a little different. Hopefully it's not too bad. Got my bird feeders out there. There is some snow on the ground. Today is March the 16th when I'm filming this. Um, a lot of the snow was gone, but we have since gotten more, so that's okay. Oh, there's a chickadee coming to the bird feeders. It's, it's a little bit later in the day. Um, we've still got some daylight here, but we... Uh, um, yeah, it's getting, I mean, it's getting closer to the spring equinox. But we often still have snow after that, so that's not uncommon for us. So I'm just gonna, I'm sitting in my chair, but it's got wheels on it, so I'm gonna, hopefully this keeps me more steady. <laughs> this is my desk, my, where I work, I teach from home. That's my coloring space too. That's my Margelin Bastin desk calendar there, which I love. It's my laptop on a glass shelf there. It's got some desk drives and underneath there. Right next to me is my uh, pit pens and also my Stetler pigment pens there in the rack. There's also the dual pit pens, some of the big brush pit pens, and the Abrek Jur markers. So that's right next to me. That's that's the ones I reach for. I'm just going to pan to the left here. I have my desk set up in a corner of my living, well, it's kind of my dining room and it's an L-shaped desk, so there's a, a little corner there that kind of doesn't, <laughs> it's, it's tough to know what to use it for. So I stuck a floor lamp in there. Now on the wall there, I have some storage units that I got from Amazon, and they fit those little two ounce uh, craft paint bottles, like the sort of the folk art size paint bottles, and they are Velcroed to the wall with some of that 3M removable Velcro stuff. I think they're meant to sit on a desk, but I don't I don't have a lot of desk space. So it's not a big desk, right? That's that's kind of it right there. So I don't have a lot of space to put things on the desk. So when I can put things up on the wall, that's better. So the paints are there, but I can reach them. There is a little rack up top there with some VersaFine inks. And I'm gonna stand up, I'm hopefully gonna Hopefully I can do this video and not make anyone sick. That's my goal. <laughs> you can see down in this little hole. <laughs> so that's the L shape of my desk. There's a set of headphones hung on the side there. I have, that is my um, craft tool, that uh, heat tool for crafting. And that is a 3M, um, and 3M is just the adhesive company, right? They, they make all of those adhesive things where they're removable. And that is for hair dryers. So I thought, well, that's what the craft tool looks like, so that would work for that. And it's nice, because I can just put it on the side of my desk there, it's out of the way, I can grab it when I need it. On the windowsill that's kind of behind my desk, there's my pencil sharpener tucked there. There's also the doll 133, but I can just grab it, I can reach around the corner of this uh, marker storage here, grab it, pull it out onto my desk when I need it, and then tuck it away. There's a few stencils hanging from a clip there, and you can see more of those little 3M um, hooks on the, actually on the, the side of the trim on the window, right? There's another one there. I did have more stencils hanging there, but I'll show you in a sec what I did with those stencils. I found a better place to put them. You can see there's a bookshelf there. So I'm looking at the back side of a bookshelf. It's an Ikea bookshelf. And there's some extra coloring books there. That's where I store a few of my pencil cases of my less used pencils over there. There's some other things down there. It's kind of storage and I can walk around the other side and, and access anything I need from that shelf there. So I'm gonna sit back down in my chair behind me, try not to fall. Gives you a better view, I think. There's some coloring books stacked up top there. Those are books that I'm looking at for, you know, maybe some spring pages to color. Uh, on the left there, you've still got my Spectrum Noir markers that uh, 
that's where they were before. I haven't changed, really changed much of anything there. There is some water-based markers next to them. We've got the Lyra brush markers in there, the Zig Art Graphic brush markers, and the Faber-Castell Goldfaber brush. I've got a little Medine uh, water container in there. It's separated into two sections, and I have one of those little paint pucks in one of them, so I can have a wash section and a clean water section. I really like it because it's ceramic, it's heavy, and it's stable. I always felt like with a lot of the other ones, I was going to tip them over on my desk. And I mean, you can see, turn back here, you know, I've got, there's a, <laughs> a, a uh, external hard drive down in there. There's a whole bunch of cords. Tipping water over is not going to be good. So yeah, because I work and craft at the same space, I, I like that one. It's very stable. I got my swatch books in there, um, some printed versions that I printed out of Sarah Renee Kirk's color catalog. That's my wireless uh, keyboard. Great. You get them from Amazon. They're really cheap. You hook them up by Bluetooth and that means that I can lean back in my chair and I don't have to be typing on that keyboard. Oh, that white thing there, that's a cup warmer. That was a gift for my daughter. Love it keeps my tea nice and warm yeah so then if I kind of go a little bit more to the left here that's my workhorse printer and I know a number of you have asked what printer I have so it's an HP and I can that's what it is LaserJet Pro I don't think you can buy it anymore that thing's a workhorse I got it originally I mean I am a teacher and um, but I also homeschooled my daughter. So, I mean, we printed, we photocopied, you know, we scanned a ton of stuff. So I got that printer, oh my gosh, 15 years ago, and it's still going. I can still get ink for it. That's a photocopier on the top. It, it's a fax too, if I hooked it up to a phone line, I guess. I never have. Uh, some things in there. There's that Artool um, masking film standing in there. There is a paper cutter, three hole punch. This that the printer is sitting on, it's actually a nightstand. I just bought it from Amazon, but it's a, it's, it's a big nightstand. It has two drawers and I just wanted it to sit next to, you know, the, the, what the de desk and I wanted it to be lower so that I could easily access the printer. And a nightstand worked perfectly for this. I mean, there's some filing over there I need to do, but I'm gonna kind of come in here. So as a nightstand, it had that little kind of space underneath there where you could put, you know, whatever, but I just use it to store. There's some of my um, watercolor paints in there. That's where I've got the boxes that green, those green boxes are Kiritaki paints and some printer paper. There's a tablet there that I use for when I'm teaching. There is my stickles. And the two drawers, well, let's take a look at the bottom drawer first. That is basically um, my, my stash, my supply drawer, my extras drawer. So if I have extra open stock pencils, or you could see some extra pit pens in the back there, uh, some extra fine liners, extra ref refills for gel pens. That's where I tend to keep all my, my refills is in that drawer. The top drawer is kind of a drawer, but it doesn't have sides. See over here? So it's like a slide out tray almost. So I have to be a little careful of what I put in there. And I, I needed to put a whole lot of um, kind of pens and things. So I, this is just a, um, gosh, the Rubbermaid Ziploc. It's like a storage container, like you would buy for, for putting baking in. So I just stuck that in there and it just keeps things contained. Rubber bands are also great. So I've got some extra doubles of things in there. I've got flat things that kind of, you know, like this is my circle template. It's like, where else would I put that? Uh, but yeah, there's some Ohuhu dot markers. Some of those zig brushables. There's some other just 
bits and bobs and, and things that I kind of didn't have anywhere else to put them. There's those CSY paints. So that's what's in that drawer. This is just a typical desk drawer. It has scissors, tape, stapler, um, some pads of paper, some clips. Just, yeah, I mean, that's... Okay, maybe not everybody's desk drawer has a programmable graphing calculator, but given that I'm, I teach chemistry, that's my trusty TA... TI-85, Texas Instruments 85. Love that calculator. They don't make it anymore. I hope it never dies. These are corn pads. Um, not on my left hand, but on my right hand, I get that bump. You know, that writer's bump. Sorry, my right hand's holding my phone. And I was trying out those to see if it would help. They do, but it's one of the reasons why I tend to not enjoy colored pencil coloring so much. It really aggravates that writer's bump. I grip. I have a death grip on pencils, and I shouldn't. So yeah, underneath, so if I just kind of roll back here, you can see there's the, the L shape. It's, it's two separate units, so I could move. They don't have to stay L shaped. It just happened to work this way. Underneath, there's just two shelves. <coughs> Excuse me. And I've got there, <laughs> there's my King Art gel pens, or gel crayons, I should say. In that green container is my gelatos. It's just one of those cheap pencil boxes. You know, they sell it back to school time. That top container, that's all my Tim Holtz Distress Crayons, like the seasonal ones. Those two containers right there, that is my Distress Oxide ink pads. And the way I put them in there, and then I tilt them on their side like that, it's the ink pads are actually laying so they're face down. Even though the containers are on their sides, the ink pads are face down. Those little containers under there are my washi tape. And they are, I don't know what they're meant for. <laughs> if they're, so you can see my shadow come in there, sorry. I don't know if they're meant for fishing tackle. <laughs> I don't really know. They were just some storage boxes from Amazon. And I'm going to just hang on. We'll see if I can. So you can see, oh, sorry, in these containers. Um, I do this with all my inks. I'll put a swatch on the bottom, and then let's see they're there. But yeah, just in terms of storage for washi tape, because I know it's just an empty container. I know it looks dirty. It's not. It was like melted. Um, so I can't really use it for food anymore, but it's a Boston pizza takeout thing. <laughs> but it works really well as a tray. I know it looks awful, it looks dirty, but it's just the plastic got melted. Um, I use it for putting pens and things in, but I've got a few notebooks down here. Yeah, these are just, they've got dividers. Maybe they were for Embroidery floss, maybe? Yeah, they might have been. But they fit rolls of washi tape. I know lots of people like to have their washi tape out, but I just, I don't have the space for that. So that's, that's one storage idea for washi tape is getting those floss storage boxes and putting the washi tape in there. We've got three of those. Underneath there, I've got my Karen Dash. Um, there's the Neocolor 2s. The Neocolor 1s I've got in a... It's it's a different... It was an empty uh, pencil tray from Lyra, I think. and Because I had the pencils in a case, so I just put the Neocolor 1s all in there. Uh, the Lyra version of Neocolor 2s are in there as well. Those are some... Mitsubishi Umi, I think. Crayons. So they're like Neocolor ones. In these drawers, I just have paper, that sort of thing. And, sorry. I have to grab my nose there. Uh, yeah. 
I've got some pre-cut little bits of card in there that I can use for swatching. Some more paper down here. That's tracing paper. Um, I use that to put in my coloring books between pages so that I don't get transfer from one page to another. I got that idea from Coloring with K and it works really well because it's not like a roll of parchment paper where it curls up on you. These are already flat. So it's been working really well. I've got all four of the uh, Colorist Special Effects books. So they are down there. I have, um, that's just some um, acrylic marker uh, swatches. I have the Coloring Bliss Quick Color Picker that I got printed by Coloring Bliss. I have a, this is just a cheap, um, those plastic cutting boards, but it works really well for if you need a waterproof surface to do any kind of work on. So I tuck it in there. And this is one of the newest storage things that I have. And I will, got some like cords down there. The stool is there for me to put my feet on. <laughs> I had a lot of my stencils, and I'll stand up here, stored, like I say, they were hanging on clips, on those hooks in the walls. And my 12 by 12 stencils were just in a, extra large Ziploc storage bag, I think, but they were always getting tangled with one another. And I was so afraid that when I was trying to pull them apart, I was gonna rip them. So I bought from Amazon, this is a 12 by 12, I think it's just a portfolio, right? And it's one of those, you're supposed to put your artwork in it probably, but because it's 12 by 12, it fits the 12 by 12 stencils. And I just tucked a piece of, it's just scrapbook paper. Again, 12 by 12. Um, I have, you know, 12 by 12 pads of scrapbook paper from years ago. I don't do scrapbooking, but they fit perfectly in here. And it's not like I can't reuse them because I just put them in there to go behind the stencils so I can see what the stencil is. If I want to use the paper, I'll just take it out and use it. But yeah, so, you know, particularly stencils like that. I was just so afraid I was going to tear it. And that way, by putting it in the book, I can easily look, see what I have. Um, so all the 12 by 12 stencils are in here. And then what I did for the smaller stencils is I took a little bit of repositional double-sided tape and just stuck the stencils again, still onto that 12 by 12 sheet of scrapbook paper. But that way, all my smaller stencils can go in here too. And I can still see what they are. Probably a solid uh, backing of paper would have been better. <laughs> be better e more easily able to see the stencils, but I didn't have solid paper. So I just... But yeah, so now I don't have the stencils hanging on the wall. I'm better able to see, you know, the stencils I have. Put the Tim Holtz ones in there, even though they have a, a little hole punch on the top, you know, I had them hanging on the wall. It's nice to, to have them in here and I can see them. So yeah, this, this was really, it was a really good thing. Uh, and it's 12 by 12. It had a piece of paper kind of on the spine here. I just took it out, but I could have labeled it, but I mean, this is the only one I have. I know what it is. Let's sit back down here. I also have this is just one of those baskets, like you can buy them at like home. I bought mine at Canadian Tire, which for those of you who aren't Canadian, probably have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, it's a, it sounds like an auto parts store, which it is, but it also has like home goods and yeah. And this is just one of those wire and I don't know, it's like raffia. I don't know what it is. Baskets. There's toothpicks in there. I shove them in there because I sometimes use them to scrape small areas of things. There's also a pin. You can see it's stuck in there. So I can I have to be careful though. Um, if I need to poke, uh, say I've got like 
stickles or something where the, the top has gotten clogged. I can use the pin to poke it. I will pull that out, but I'm just going to have shoved on the side here my Cairn Dash palette, but also just a cheap plastic cutting board because it's a little bit bigger than the Cairn Dash pa uh, palette. And putting gel crane on there, you can put more down, you can pick it up with the soft brushes. It just works really well. And then I just have this. This is just a, some, some cloths I have in here, cheap cloths for, um, you know, when you're doing watercolor and you want to uh, dry off your brush a bit, there's an extra pair of reading glasses for me. But yeah, and then I just put some other storage bins or containers within there. They're just old ones that I had that I, you know, you can put baking in them or whatever. But just to try and keep things slightly organized, because I didn't have another drawer, you know, this works, I think, really well. There's some jars in there. And if you can see down in there, I have some jars that I have brushes and, and pens in. There's all kinds of media in there, mediums. There's some little spray things. There's a Tim Holtz spray. Bleed proof white. There's masking fluid. There's that little jar of stickles that I have. Yeah, there's the iridescent media back there, I think, from Tim Holt, or not Tim Holt, sorry, Windsor Newton. Medium, media, sorry. This is the shimmery goodness that I use for snow. So, I mean, it's here, it's it's accessible, it's right next to me, um, and I can just pull that basket out, so I'm not having to fight with a whole bunch of tiny little things that are individually on that shelf, it just makes it easier. So that's maybe another storage idea that would work. Come up, hopefully, sorry, those are things I had to pull out to show you other things. Kind of scan around. Still looking snowy outside. You can see the snow, the sun is going down though, I think. I put lots of things in jars on the windowsill here. So all kinds of brushes and blenders and uh, these are, they're like tubes of small brushes that I use for blending inks. There's some watercolor brushes there. Right here is the top of, oh, right, oh, sorry, there's a garbage can that's kind of icky. Oh, look at that. There you can see some of the swatching, um, project that I've been working on. It was also working on updating my swatch books, but there is some of the swatches that where the color goes right to the edge. So swatch strips, swatch cards, and I have them hanging there. I have, this is an Ikea, just a, a metallic, or it's, it's made of metal. It's just a, a drawer unit. Those are, those are resistance bands. When I'm sitting here at my desk, I keep I need to remind myself to do um, arm workouts and really strengthen my back after I hurt my back there at the beginning of the year. So that's, they're just tucked into the handles. On top of that unit, before we look inside, I've got some pencil cases. The binoculars are for bird watching right out my window. Uh, I've got a workable fixative there. I've got a little, little it's like a letter organizer that I've put just scrap pieces of paper and what have you in. Blush, blush, brush. Well, it is a blush brush, but I use it for um, pencil dust. There are some uh, antacid tablets there. Oh, tea time coloring edition. That was a thought I had. Not sure what I'm gonna do with that. Uh, eraser there, electric eraser. And then this is a lot of my jelly roll gel pens and some others in there as well. It's just a wooden stand thing I got from Amazon, but it works nicely. This drawer is Distress Ink. Some of those Fantastics that I showed you in my haul, I think, from the beginning of the year. Just various little blending tools and things. These are just cheap from Amazon. I think they're meant for makeup, maybe, or something, but 
they work for getting in little teeny uh, areas with there's some eyeshadow applicators the, the disposable ones again really useful for blending with inks but I have all my distress uh, mini inks in there and then these tubes are I think I've showed you these before they're just upside down there's eight little brushes in there and they stack and I just have one for every um, ink color that I have for the distress ink so I don't have to wash them <laughs> I just keep using the same one for the same color and I use those Avery circle labels to label each one so that's drawer number one drawer number two it's about a, there's my palette uh, pastels so there's the two Jane Davenport ones there's the pan pastel ones I have them screwed together in uh, stacks this is a little bag that my daughter had bought for me for a Christmas present. And I have some calligraphy pens in there. I've got some of those small blending tools from Ranger. Just various things in there. Some of the pen pastel tools, some stamp cleaner, some sea sponges in there for different textures. It is on wheels, so sometimes if the drawers stick, I have to stick my foot underneath. <laughs> there is some of the sprays that I have, some more of those little blending uh, things for the different sprays. So there's some dilution sprays in there, some of the regular, some of the mica ones. These drawers are really shallow, so I, that's why I thought they would work well for things, you know, that like these sprays. I mean, I, I store them on there. I don't know supposed to be stored in their sides probably not but uh oh, there's some more sea sponges there's some of the stress oxides but yeah i mean storing them on their sides they are kind of stacked too deep in there right there's there's more underneath but it just worked really well for these shallow drawers this one oh this one has uh, there are my, um, oh, the Derwent Ink Tents pans and then Derwent Graph Tint pans, right? Got those ones. And, ooh, lost it. Just put this up on the desk. There are more um, FW Pearlescent inks that are supposed to go in there, but I don't normally have them in those trays in there. I was just trying something else out, but it wasn't working. We're not going to do that. Take that off. And the very last drawer. Forgive me, I'm going to have to use my right hand. There. Sorry about that. Kind of a variety of things. There's some Lavinia stencil brushes. Some of their smoothies. There's a rotary cutter in there. Um, there's those moon phase stamps that I think I talked about in my, or I showed in my uh, swatchbook video. There's the Brilliance inks. There's some other inks. This is some double-sided tape. So yeah, there's just random things in there. It's not the most expensive unit in the world, but works for what I need it to do. And then we've got my Winsor & Newton alcohol markers there. stand up again that's a lovely billy jacobs picture i have there there are my acrylic markers so the brush markers are kind of here and then the the ones where you have to you know activate and shake are right there there's my oh sorry focus there's my tombos it's a cute little mug it's just got some extra pair of glasses in there and some I think that's where a lot of my uh, Wink of Stella are in there. Those two little round things are ceramic palettes. Etcher. And I plan on using them for, I think I've said this before, still haven't, um, the FW Pearlescent Acrylic Inks. Because they're acrylic ink, you can't, it's not like watercolor where you could put them in here 
you know, put them in a palette and then reactivate them. Um, once the acrylic ink's dry, you can't. So you don't, I don't want to put out a whole lot of acrylic ink at one time because you don't want to put out more than you're going to use, right? So I thought these palettes with the tiny little wells would work well for that. They're meant for watercolor, but... And then underneath, here's my pencils. Well, most of them. I tend to use a lot of those cases with the multiple zippers. Not all, though. I like to use mason jars for storing pencils or whatever that I'm using for um, different projects. There are some coloring books of mine. And if I just back up a bit here, turn a bit more, try not to make anyone ill. <laughs> there are the rest of my coloring books. I have a few coloring books in that shelf that's kind of you know, we saw the back of on the other side, but um, those two shelves are, are most of my coloring books. There's a little pile of coloring books off to the right-hand side there. Those are ones that I've colored in already for March. Oh, there's my Willerhorn one down there with all my chemistry stuff, because it's too tall to go anywhere else. There's my books. I have a lot of books, not just coloring books. I have a lot of book books. There's Beaker and Dr. Bunsen Honeydew and my little moles for my chemistry sitting up there on the shelf. And that, if I just, there's a hallway next to me, swing back around, try not to make anyone ill. That is it. So it's very in, incongruous, incongruous. <laughs> there's spring images on my laptop and it's winter outside, but that's okay. Light is fading, so I should probably call this done. Hope you guys enjoyed this updating tour of my coloring space. If anybody has any questions about anything, um, just let me know in the comments below. Hope everyone is safe. I hope everyone is well. I hope everyone is enjoying their coloring. Until next time, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.